Okay, come on. Here we go. In the book, chapter 12, what's motivating this writer? On page 145, you'll probably notice that I'm not giving a lot of specific assignments out of the book, but you should still read it if you really want to learn what's going on. There's a, a lot of good stuff in there. Ethos, logos, and pathos. I call them the three musketeers of rhetoric. You need to be familiar with these terms. These two articles here from the Times are from what you have to read for the first textual analysis. They're about veganism. And I picked these specifically because people usually don't have a very adamant or emotionally charged response to vegetarianism or veganism. Sometimes I guess they do, but it's not quite the same thing as if I was going to have readings about things like abortion or some of the other really hot button topics. So read them both. They're both from the New York Times. Do this one first, Gary Steiner, Animal, Vegetable, Miserable. And the next one, Sorry Vegans, Brussels Sprouts Like to Live Too by Natalie Angier. They're both published at the New York Times. Her article was actually a response to his. Okay, now we have some other folders. Verbal Rhetoric. Connotation and Denotation. Take a look at that. You'll notice that there are are two parts to most words. There's the literal definition and the emotional definition. There is a video by George Carlin, who you may have heard of, who was brilliant. I wish he was back. He, he died a little while ago. I think we need him again. But anyway, um, he's talking about PTSD. And then interesting article from the Washington Times about why the people who make drones don't want us to call them drones. Here's another one. Um, General Motors, who's been having some trouble with uh, recalls on their vehicles, put out a PowerPoint for their own people, you know, asking them to avoid certain words. Um, and then there's an interesting thing here from Fortune 500 companies, all the different mission statements. Fortune 500 companies are the big, biggest of the big companies in the U.S. Here's a short speech from Jeff Daniels, actually, from the movie Gettysburg. And then we've got a couple of Key and Peel, who I, I am pretty fond of. The Substitute Teacher, one you may have seen. And then the East-West College Bowl, where they recite uh, some of the names that you've probably seen if you're watching an NFL game. Okay, let's go back here. That's Verbal Rhetoric. Visual Rhetoric. This is Movies and pictures. Um, this one, uh, the awareness test, uh, if you may have seen this. Um, get ready for that one. You have to be very on, on your game. There's a video from the Gulf of Mexico restoring the Gulf after what happened with the oil spill. Generic brand video, which is a video of all the stuff you might see if you were watching a um, promotional uh, video for a corporation. Instant trailer review. I love these guys. They review a lot of trailers. And they will take a, a two-minute trailer or less and spend 10 to 12 minutes talking about it. And how do they do that, you ask? It's easy because they freeze it and they back up. And they talk about it and they focus. Don't read or watch something and blow through it thinking you're analyzing it because you've got 30 seconds out of it. No, you know, that, that's, that's not how it works. You've got to look carefully. Okay. These are all videos, by the way. Hell No, Sensible Horror Film, which is a uh, parody of a horror movie. If, you, if you're a horror fan, and I know a lot of students... Uh, these days, watch a lot of horror films. You'll recognize some of the cliches here. And then there's a link to a famous painting from the uh, surrealist painter René Magritte from about 100 years ago called This Is Not a Pipe. 
and be very careful with this one because it's going to be part of the discussion group. Okay. Let's see. And finally, music and dance. You might like this one. You may have seen it before. It smells like Rock and Robin. It's kind of a mashup. Um, Axis of Awesome, they're an Australian band, and they have a great video called Four Chords where they try to explain that every pop song from the last, since Journey, how long is that now, the 70s, has been made up of four chords. may sound surprising now, but when you hear some of the songs they throw in there, you'll recognize them. Bobby McFerrin demonstrates the power of the pentatonic scale. Uh, penta means five. Which, uh, pentatonic scale is uh, based on the power of fifths. If you play the piano or any other instrument, you might recognize that name. Sasquatch Music Festival 2009, Guy Starts Dance Party. I, I like this video. They, everyone seems kind of geeky at the beginning, but it, there's really a lot of courage, I think, going on here that to stand up by yourself in front of all those people and just do what you want is an incredibly brave uh, proposition. And if there's anything as brave as doing that, it's the person who comes up after you to stand next to you. That that takes a lot of courage as well. Um, La Mama Morta. Mama, of course, is Mama and Morta is death from the movie Philadelphia with Tom Hanks. Have you ever seen it? It's about the early day of AIDS before there was any kind of treatment. It has Denzel Washington, who looks like he's about 12. It's a, it's a beautiful scene. It has opera. Opera, nobody likes it usually, um, but I love the scene because it really shows me what music can do for an individual human being. Uh, Dave Chappelle, one of my favorite videos, but be aware you don't have to watch it if you don't want to. Um, there's, you know, it's very controversial. Of course, Dave Chappelle is a lot, uses a lot of racial uh, themes and terminology, but I think he really, really gets it in my opinion. And then the last two, Where the Hell is Matt uh, 2008 and Where the Hell is Matt 2012, where this guy Matt uh, Harding goes around the world and just dances with people. Um, sounds lame when you first hear it, but when you watch it, it's extre extremely moving in my opinion. And the first one uh, is very spontaneous. He goes around, dances like a geek, and he gets people from all corners of the globe to dance with him. And he got famous for that. So he went and did it again in 2012. And if the next one is a lot more put together, more higher produced, but it's still ext extremely moving and touching, in my opinion. Hope you like them. Let's see. Let's scoot over to the assignment. You have two textual analyses here. Uh, so get ready to do some writing. Read Animal, Vegetable, Miserable by Gary Steiner and The Rebuttal, Sorry Vegans by Natalie Angier. Uh, compose an analysis in which you discuss ethos, logos, and pathos in both articles. You'll have to look up both of these folks because you'll need to know ethos means are they credible do they know what they're talking about and what are they selling so you'll have to do a little research and um, then talk about how they use language and I'm not going to say I don't care about your opinion but for an exercise like this I, I don't care about your opinion if you're a vegan or not a vegan that's important to you, but not to this assignment. You need to read carefully and discuss how they do it. So if you want to talk about yourself and your opinions, those kind of things go good at the beginning and the end of a paper. Textual analysis number two, I'm going to be pretty... Uh, ooh, how do I put this? I'll be pretty generous here. And I know that everybody has different learning styles. You'll remember from Module 2 text that there's three folders, verbal, visual, and music and dance. Pick one. 
whichever one you feel most attracted to. And within that folder, choose three sources, videos, uh, readings, or a combination. It's, that's entirely up to you. It's, it's your call. But what you're going to do is compose an analysis in which you point out tools and techniques that I deployed to affect the audience. Make sure you talk about what they're doing, whether it's visuals or certain words they're using or the way they use music and dance to get the audience to do and think and feel the way that they're hopefully going to do and think and feel after experiencing this text. So pick one of those areas and within that area choose three texts and discuss them. You should be able to get to two pages easily for both of these if you focus and use a lot of details. Okay. Don't forget the first draft of the research paper is due June 29th and very quickly we'll get to the discussions area so I can let you go. Discussion board. Module 2. Words and manipulation. Go into the um, the verbal folder area. How do you feel about the way government business and or markers use language? Again, uh, this, this is pretty much based on your learning style or your politics. Uh, some people see the government as being more manipulative and problematic, and some people see business in that same light. But your choice. Okay. Is there any particular word or phrase that drives you crazy? Uh, module 2, Analyzing Images. There's a painting in one of the Module 2 folders called This Is Not a Pipe by Rene Magritte, who was a very famous surrealist painter from 100 years back. And it's a painting of a pipe. I'm not going to fool you. But underneath it, he actually wrote, as part of the painting itself, Ceci n'est pas un pipe. So if you can't read French, what that means is this is not a pipe. So the question is, if it's not a pipe, what is it? All right, try to answer that. And then finally, the power of music. After reading and watching the music and dance texts, how do you think music affects us as individual human beings and as members of a society? So whichever folder you decide to pick for your textual analysis number two, you still should go through all of them. Because I, I, I tried hard to pick stuff that I thought would be fun and interesting. So uh, indulge me here. You know, there's not a lot of reading. There's uh, some listening and watching. And give it your best shot. And that goes for a couple of weeks. And I think that about covers it. As usual, um, email me if you have any questions. All right. So good luck.